then then the, the then then the body stays in its in its in its natural form and in it, in a body in its natural form is not able to be glorified in the spirit with the lord one day so god is coming for a church so we're about to go live here on facebook just kind of let everybody know uh here this this evening god bless you pastor carweta and and we're we're waiting on facebook to deposit those funds and once they deposit those funds um those funds are going directly to you uh so that you may get that computer so that you can be able to teach uh the people there in kenya so a big shout out to you guys god bless you thank you so much for everything you do uh for the body of christ we're also having a, a fundraiser here in about i think i think next week i think it's july 11 or july 12 uh our our staff has come up uh with an idea that we're gonna do a fundraiser so we already have some businesses that have donated some car wash here in america you know it, it's 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 a little bit different obviously you know um you you can you can raise money by washing people's cars you know isn't that isn't that crazy uh, so we're going to raise some some funds for Pakistan and then eventually we will be able to do the same for India and eventually you know we're going to be um funding some kind of normality uh hopefully in a couple of weeks we're going to have a mission service at New Life Church where all the offerings that we will be picking up will be going towards they will be going towards our missions all around the world, including Kenya, India, and Pakistan. So, you know, uh, just bear with us, be patient with us, uh, let you know that, that we're trying our, our very, very best, even, even in the time that we're living in right now, where unfortunately, like I, like what we were talking about earlier, uh, first of all, happy birthday, America, you know, happy 4th of July to America. Let's, let's do that first. And, and just remind everybody how how beautiful this country is and not only that but how beautiful all the countries that we represent the body of christ they're beautiful countries unfortunately men um make it uncomfortable for mankind and you know it, it doesn't matter uh there will never be a perfect government there will never be a perfect kingdom the only perfect kingdom will be established by our Lord Jesus Christ as he comes as the Lion of Judah to establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So that will be a perfect kingdom and he will reign for 1000 years. And, and, and that is where and, and that is what we're looking forward to. Amen. Uh, the Amen. Jews are looking forward to that. We as the Gentiles that have been engrafted into the blessings of Abraham uh we're excited for that too and we're getting ready for that uh it, it's soon to come we don't know when obviously tribulation must happen first a lot of people would say well you know america doesn't know what tribulation is well um, america is going to get ready to feel the tribulation I, I promise you um there's so many things that are happening in america that that are setting the stage for for a, 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 a persecuted state amen and it's going to be a, a persecuted state and, and it's and it's going to and it's going to happen eventually uh as the elections come up uh you know early voting right now we're encouraging everybody to go vote you know that is where the power is at you know you can you can complain all you want on facebook but actually the power comes when you're allowed to vote and in America, you're still allowed to vote. So, you know, uh, we have a media. Uh, the media is not a coincidence that is called the media uh, because it, it's a medium, you know. And of course, anybody from Kenya, you know what mediums do. And Pakistan, you know what mediums do. And they, they're literally the mouthpiece of an agenda. And the agenda is the Antichrist spirit. That is the ultimate agenda. You can name it many other things you can name it witchcraft you can name it darkness you can name it 
voodoo, you can name it, whatever you can name it, what what white magic, what mediums uh, are the mouthpiece of. But the ultimate agenda is the Antichrist spirit. That is that is the agenda that is being spewed out into the masses, into the people. And then you get to a place where where we are the body. Right. This is a body. This is a temple where the Bible talks about in Ezekiel that he will take out the heart of stone of man, which which if, if the, the more you look at it, it's unbelief because it's dealing with the heart. And that is what and that is what God is going to judge. You see, man, we judge on the outside appearance of man. Amen. But God looks at the heart. So God wants to take out that heart of unbelief in the book of Ezekiel. He takes the heart of unbelief, the heart of stone. This is why if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can command that mountain to be removed, which is the mountain of unbelief. And then he puts in the heart of flesh. And that heart of flesh is his son, Jesus Christ. In other words, you didn't believe. Now you believe. In the son of God, that he died, he was buried, he resurrected on the third day. He's the atonement of our sins, the Christ Jesus covered by the blood of Jesus. Um, God doesn't see our sin. He doesn't see our heart of stone no more. But now he sees the, the heart of flesh. In other words, he sees his son in us, on us as his bride. And then the Bible says that then he will put in his spirit. That's in the book of Ezekiel. He puts in his spirit and that is the Holy Spirit. That is our helper. That is our teacher. That is our comforter. And he puts in the spirit of God that dwells in us, this temple. No more the tabernacle, no more the, the temple of God. But now it's us. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit where God continues to desire to dwell with man. He desires to dwell with man, to have a relationship with man, has a desire for all men to come to the knowledge of the truth, has a desire for all men to be saved. Amen. And, and what for? So that we, so that we are able, amen, uh, we are caused by the Holy Spirit. The key word is caused. We are caused by the Holy Spirit <clears throat> to walk in the statutes of God, in the law of God, in the law of God, where the Bible says that Jesus is, is greater, becomes greater than Moses. In other words, he didn't abolish the law, but he fulfills the law. So as Christ being in us, the Holy Spirit in us, we're able to walk. We are able to walk in the statutes of God. So ah. as, as, as we're in, as, as we're in the, in, in this times. And like I said, uh, again, happy birthday, America and, and everything that's going on, the, 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 the spiritual civil war that is going on, not only in America, but all over the world. And it's for one intention and one intention only. And that is to bring in the one world order. And as as the one world order is going to be brought in, you know, because it's uh, you know, uh, it's amazing how we're not hearing of terrorism no more. I mean, terrorism is old news right now. I mean, I mean, I mean, still in, in, in Pakistan, there's still children being um, taken out and being uh, hit and being uh, um, persecuted by non-Christians. I mean, India can tell me that. Right. Those pastors from India. If somebody catches you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, tell us, tell us what will happen if you're caught by another religion or non-Christians. What would happen to you if you're caught preaching the gospel of Jesus? Any one of you. Pastor Naveen. Yes. Yes. What would happen if. If a child or you yourself was caught out there 
preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, gathering a crowd or get, oh, I don't like to call it crowds. Uh, forgive me. Gathering uh, a mass of people uh, to hear the gospel. What would happen to you? It's a, it's a really tough time for us when we are sharing gospel to the people among the gatherings. Because many other, we have much of majority is opposition to Christianity. Sometimes, sometimes they will mock us. Sometimes they are ready to beat us. It's a very difficult situation for us to share the gospel in public areas, especially. Because there are some people who are wantedly wants to do something for Christians to perish. Sometimes they, they used to stone us. Sometimes they use very vulgar words towards the Christians, those who are sharing gospel. They will use very, very difficult words, very vulgar words. They can't bear those words. The very difficult situation to share gospel in public areas. I mean, I mean that 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 is what um I truly believe that as we move forward, <clears throat> uh I mean you would have to be asleep uh in America not to not to be able to see what is happening. Like I said, the the, the division being caused by the antichrist spirit and everything's falling into place um we were preaching last was it was it last wednesday Nady? i think we were preaching last wednesday where where john the baptist had to decrease and he said he must increase so i must decrease so as as the church is gonna decrease christ will increase Because one thing we've learned in the gospel, one thing we've learned about the history of the church, and, and this is why it's very important for us to study even the history of the church. I mean, we study the word of God theologically, but we also study the history of the church, the, you know, the, the, the martyrs that's been happening for, forever, the, the disciples that were, that were martyred for the gospel, you know, is that as, as Christians are being martyred, a Christians are being dec and Christians are decreasing as humanity is persecuting them, persecuting us. And I hate to say, I would hate to include myself in the persecution of us, but I mean, the only persecution happens in America is that we're talked about and we're hated because of speaking the truth, but persecution is coming. But as, as the Christians are being persecuted, that that's what John the Baptist was talking about, that he must decrease that the Christians were going to decrease. And the Bible says very clearly, even when Paul was saying in chapter 12, he was saying that, that um, as we are weak, his strength is made perfect. That's Christ. And as, Christ, and, and as, we, as the church is being persecuted and being decreased, you know, I mean, we see it all across the world where you can't gather. You, you can't get, I mean, you, you can gather, Uh, to proclaim, you can gather to to make an assembly outside the streets and talk about and talk about you know whatever the agenda is that the media is pushing out. You can gather there, uh, but you can't gather at a place of worship. And and these things are going to happen to where I think yesterday I was I was I was uh, watch, looking at some pictures at, at a at a, a pastor's wife uh, from uh, from I think it was Pakistan. And she's a friend of mine on, on Facebook, and she was showing some pictures of a 12-year-old boy that was taken by, by non-Christians and literally just whooped on. I mean, his whole body was bruised. And, and I think as, as, as this continues to go on, this, this is just the beginning. Like I said, it's the beginning. And there is a civil war, spiritual civil war. And... And like I said, um, I truly believe that we've been preaching about the temple. Well, le let me finish about John the Baptist. So he decreased, Christ increased, and then John the Baptist went to prison. So this is very prophetic uh, for the church. We got a decrease. We will be persecuted, even sent to prison. And then ultimately, the, the, the ultimate worship is to die to die for what we believe in. And of course, that's not a that's not a prop, popular preaching here in America, but 
but I would, I would, I guarantee you that in Kenya, that's the type of preaching they preach in Kenya. Right. Is that correct? Pastor Caritha? I mean, you're, you're very close to Somalia and you've seen the injustice that has come against the Christians there in that Northeast area of Africa uh, where Kenya is at. Would you, would you tell us a little bit uh, of your experiences you've seen maybe in some Christians that have been persecuted in, in your area? And let me unmute you first. Uh, hold on, hold on, Pastor Kowitha. You got to be unmuted there. Take off your mute so that we can hear you speak. But uh, while we wait on Pastor Kowitha to do that, there we go. Go ahead, Pastor. <clears throat> Tell us about um, some things you've experienced or some uh, things you've seen as well there in, 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 in Kenya. Yeah, first of all, I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the gospel here in Kenya, we are bordering with the Somalia. First of all, I need to tell you anybody who is a Christian is terrorizing spiritually to Muslim. Especially when uh, uh, our grandparents were, were, were forced to, to Islam. They were forced to join Islam. And from there, even me, first of all, I joined Islam. But when I, I refuted the teachings and the, the Islamists, they wanted to kill me. So they don't want anyone who is a Christian. If you believe in Christ, they are seeking you and they are killing totally. So to those who believe in Christ, they have powerful and they are strong and bold to preach Jesus to the Muslims here. But we believe that we will be victorious. We believe one the thing God is our deliverer. Jesus Christ is our protector. The devil will not be able to withstand you. You will be crushed. The Bible says, if you, you will be in Christ, who will be against you? The devil will, so, will see you and cry. So the Islam are seeking for those people who are denouncing their faith and they kill, they persecute them. Every corner, every here in the corners of the country where the Muslim is. But to me and my wife and the group here, and we believe in Christ, we stand and we tell them the true gospel especially the gospel that you receive from you as our pastor. You have taught us the trueness of the word to stand hold in the faith and the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Some have, some have, give, some have given their faith from Islam and they have joined. Uh, I have one brother who recently uh, denounced the faith of Islam because I told him I was a Muslim, I was a Muslim teacher, and I had uh, uh, preaching to other Christians, telling them lies. And that brother uh, has received Jesus Christ. He has a very good testimony from Islam. So we are here preaching Jesus Christ. We don't fear. Even if we die, we will die in Christ. Because this world, we are a pious. We are a passing by. And where we are heading to, Jesus is telling, telling us, that he has gone to prepare a place and where we will stand and say, we will be those who believe in his name, Christian, they will be with Christ. We are a priest to, to Muslims to deny their faith, they get saved to stay in the light hand of God, the light hand of Jesus Christ. Amen. People Amen. Believe Amen, me. Pastor. I t I t you know, and, 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 and that is the passion and that is the the, the having the Holy Spirit, our relationship with God, knowing about everything that he's done, his, the, the mercy that he has shown us, the grace that he has shown us, the love that he has given us, 
that so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he who believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And our appreciation, our being thankful to him for that is to be willing, uh, number one, to know his word, have a relationship with him, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the ultimate sacrifice would be to be willing to give up our lives here on earth, knowing that away from the body is to be present with the Lord. That is the ultimate gospel. That is the gospel that in America, Hallelujah. I believe, I believe in America that that gospel has not been preached in the last 20 years or the last 15 to 20 years, or even 25 years. I would even I would venture to say that that that's not the gospel that Americans have been hearing. They have been hearing <clears throat> a prosperity gospel, a name it and claim it gospel. They've been hearing the gospel that we are little gods. I mean, that is heresy. They've been, they've been hearing a, a bunch of heresy and, 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 uh, and, um, and just uh, false, false prophecy here in America so that their tea, their drink, their Kool-Aid, has been at has been filled with sugar and we have a lot of sick christians that are not aware of the true cost of being a believer in christ jesus and that is to deny yourself to pick up your cross and to follow christ so now so now we have this explosion uh of a group of maybe perhaps christians that haven't been taught haven't been discipled the true gospel, the true meaning of what it is to be a Christian. And then you have the other side where you have the world. And then you have this agenda, the Antichrist agenda, mixed in with the medium. And we all know where the medium is. You know, Kenya, they will tell you exactly our stories of yeah. mediums. And I'm yeah. pretty sure in Pakistan as well. I mean, because, yeah. you know, and what happens, you get all this yeah. mixed up and now you have the perfect storm. And this is where we're at right now. I would I would even venture to say this, and I'll venture to say this, and 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 I'll say it, and I'll put my I'll put my credibility on the line as a pastor. I'll venture to say this that even the religion of Muslims has been kidnapped by the media, has been kidnapped by by the world, by the one world order, because. Uh, we know, <clears throat> I know Muslims personally. I'm sure you all know Muslims personally. And they're God-fearing people. They, their God or, or their image of their God, right? And they love family. They, 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 they love God. And, and they're thinking of who the image of God is. They love them. And they love their family. And they're not violent against Christians, but then, but then you take a group of Islamic terrorists and they kidnap a religion. And then you put that with, with the media. And now, now you have a religion <clears throat> that has been kidnapped by an antichrist agenda. Now I'll venture to say this, that Christianity that is going to be kidnapped by that same sort of agenda. And when that happens, when that happens, Christianity will be looked upon as an enemy to the state or an enemy of the state. It will also be looked upon as a terrorist group. I'm telling you, these things are going to happen. This is why John the Baptist decreased. He had to decrease. So Christ had to be increased. So when there is martyring going on, when there is persecution going on, the gospel spreads like wildfire. <clears throat> and that's what happens with the 12 apostles, that as persecution came, the gospel spread <clears throat> because we got to decrease and he increases. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Amen. And, and, and the prophetic thing is that persecution will come. We decrease persecution comes. And then, of course, uh, the beheading of John the Baptist. And what happens? The gospel spread like wildfire. 
and we're still right now preaching the apostolic doctrine the foundation that has been laid on the rock where jesus said upon this rock i will build my church and that is us we are the church being built on the doctrine that was preached to the apostles that were under persecution that were martyred <clears throat> and it was spread out and then of course <clears throat> the revelation came and god set this man aside john the beloved a man who died of natural causes which the world tried to kill him they tried to kill him they poured oil on this man uh he would not die so what did the romans do they put him in an island of patmos patmos meaning to kill you in other words the the world will not be able to shut up the gospel and they put this man john the beloved in the island of patmos which means to kill you so the things that are meant to kill us what the enemy meant for evil god turns it to good he meant it for good and john Hallelujah. the beloved in that island of patmos he gets, he gets the revelation what is the book of revelation christ jesus he comes there is rapture there is tribulation there is the setting up of the kingdom of heaven there is the apocalypse and then there is the 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 the, the new jerusalem amen that is the revelation that is to come and he set this man aside so that he can receive so that we can receive the prophecy the only book in the history of mankind that is illegal in so many countries why is it illegal because satan has temporary authority in this world and as long as he has temporary authority the truth is always gonna wanna be veiled amen that's why second corinthians talked about that the natural man has been veiled has been blinded so that they don't see what, what we see amen so that's why we are the church and it's our responsibility to be the light of the world to be the salt of the earth <clears throat> let me say something about the light of the world and the and the salt of the earth i was ministering to somebody yesterday i don't know who i was ministering to somebody i was talking to somebody and oh yes 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 we were we were we're, we're getting fixed to fix the altar we're, we went to go buy some wood and uh we're, we're putting in a new altar so that me and nady can 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 walk around longer longer aisle right and uh and i was talking to them and i was telling them that as the light of the world you know all we have to do is just be in one position and be the light and literally guide the lost boats the lost ships back into shore that's what the light does it it, it says here i am it gives light to the house but the salt of the earth that's more personal that's more personal because if you all know because i'm um, perhaps you know your family members or you know people in order for you to preserve meat you have to add salt am, am i correct guys am i correct you got to add yes, salt yes. to preserve it right that is correct you know, yes in america we have we have we yeah. have no perception of what that means but in the world even in mexico and nady will tell you you know we we come from mexico we have ancestors from mexico i still remember people you know putting salt on, on me on meat and to preserve the meat they had to put salt we are the salt and we and, and, how, and how did they add the salt to the meat they literally had to use their hands so the salt to the earth has to be personal it not only the light of the world where we proclaim the word and, and we and people see our lives but then the salt of the earth has to be personal that's why jesus said go preach the gospel and go make disciples the making disciples is personal it's 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 a personal uh it's a personal connection that we have with a human being especially with someone who's been naturally blinded by by the temporary god of this world but anyway i i, I say this i'll say another thing that there is a spiritual civil war going on in the whole world and and this is how we know that this temple needs to be caused a spirit causes it to walk in its statutes now 
either we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God and it is caused to walk in the statutes of God, in the law of God, which is Jesus Christ, because Jesus fulfilled the law. That's why he didn't abolish it, but he fulfilled it. This is why we deny ourselves, we pick up our cross, and we follow Christ Jesus. When we are filled with the Spirit of God, we are caused by his Spirit to walk, to follow Christ Jesus, to walk in the statutes of God. Now, there is another spirit. You know, I mean, people, you can, you can come up with all kinds of names. There's only one spirit. I mean, there's only two spirits, the, the, the spirit of God or the anti-spirit, the antichrist spirit. The antichrist spirit, you can name it demons. You can name it rebelliousness. You can name it all kinds of things. But we know that it's the antichrist spirit. When a human being as a temple is walking in the antichrist spirit, he is literally walking in the desires, in the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. So it is very important right now that the natural man is being filled with the Antichrist spirit and is coming against the body of Christ. This is why the Bible is very clear. He said, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities powers, rulers of darkness in this world. Guess what? They are ruling. They are ruling in the dark realm in this world. And then spiritual wickedness in the high places, or the Bible calls it in the heavens. That is the second heaven. We have the first heaven where we're at. We can see the sky. We can see the sun. We can see the stars. That's the first heaven. You have the second heaven. The second heaven is where that spiritual warfare is at. It's, it's where the angel, when, when Daniel was praying, that the prayers uh, were hindered because there was a spiritual wrestling in those prayers that were not reaching God. And then, of course, you have the third heaven. And the third heaven is where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father. So we know that it's a spiritual warfare. Now, why do I say that? Because at the end of the day, church, we have to walk in the spirit. And there is a distinction. And you can see it. You can see it on TV. You can see it in the media. I mean, you can see it in all these things. And, and there's two, two, two entities. You have the children of God and you have the children of the devil. I mean, that's, that's the black and white. That, there is no gray area there. Now, if you say that to the world... The world comes against you. But that's the truth. Now, the children of the devil can be divided by so many things. Of course, tradition, uh, beliefs, religion. But at the end of the day, when, Christ, when, when there is the judgment of God, God is going to judge our hearts. And that heart has to be, that heart of stone has to be taken out, which is unbelief. Got to be filled with the heart of flesh. That is Christ Jesus. And so that the spirit of God may dwell in man. That is the seal. The Bible says, do not grieve the, the seal of the seal, the, the Holy Spirit, for he is the seal for the day of redemption. And that is, that is when Christ comes to judge the church. So let's go to the book of Galatians because I, I want to talk about the, the civil uh, spiritual civil war. Uh, the Lord is just right now, just, just uh, putting this in my spirit right now. And I want to talk about this because there's a distinction. And I want to talk about the things that are going on here in America. Of course, happy birthday, America and, 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 and America. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Stop fighting against your brothers. You know, even in the church, we have, we're, we're fighting amongst each other. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's not a pretty sight. It's not a pretty sight. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. You know, I'm praying for all the pastors in America, all the pastors in the DFW, all the pastors here in the city of Mesquite. Uh, in the city of Mesquite, we are united. We are, we, are, we are speaking weekly. We are uniting in how to gather. And, 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 and everything that we do in the city of Mesquite, 
uh, we, we, we get around other pastors and we get confirmation from each other on what God is speaking. And we are more united than ever here in the city of Mesquite. And, and I feel for, for the other pastors that if you don't have a circle of men of God, uh, that, that, that you can just, uh, conform to you, that you can just, um, not conform to, but, but that you can rely on, uh, someone to talk to, man, I encourage you to get somebody, um, surround yourself with wise counsel. You know, I'm praying for the pastors because, you know, we're making tough decisions making very tough decisions in a in a pandemic that's been created by the media in a pandemic that's been created it's been created i'm not saying there's not a sickness there's a sickness take care of yourself cover your mouth wash your hands don't touch your face you know a pakistan will tell you that kenya will tell you that there, there's sickness going on am i correct yes but, but yes. the pandemic yes <clears throat> But the pandemic has been created by the media. Let's just agree with that. The media yes. being the medium yes. of the Antichrist agenda. And we know that. I'm awake to it. Yes. Everybody's awake to it. And what it's caused is caused the yeah. division. It's caused the division to the left, to the right, from the world, to the church, from the church itself. Amen. Uh, if you don't wear a mask, you're irresponsible. If you don't, it's, it's just creating division. And the devil knows that a house divided will not stand. And anybody who falls into that, amen, you're, 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 you're allowing the blind to lead the blind, basically. And Jesus said that both will fall into the ditch. So we got to walk in the spirit. Let's go to the book of, let's go to, the, let's go to the book of um, Galatians. Let's go to the book of Galatians. And let's start with verse 16. Because this is a temple, <clears throat> it's a temple of the Holy Spirit, or it's the temple of the Antichrist spirit. Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And I want to talk about today, for everybody who's tuning in here this, this, this morning, and, and God bless everybody in, in India, in in. Uh, in, in uh, uh, hope Pakistan, uh, pa Pastor Zaya couldn't come on, but uh, God bless you, Pastor Kowitha from, from Kenya, <clears throat> new life. And I want to talk about this is the temple, and it's either filled by the Spirit of God or it's filled by the Antichrist Spirit. That is, that is as, simple, as simple as we can make it. <clears throat> and if we read in verse 16... Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I'm going to go ahead and read it. I say then, the Bible says, walk in the spirit. Let me clear my. There we go. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, uh, the, the, the lust of the world. Amen. And, and that is the, the flesh operating completely in, in the Antichrist spirit. And that's what we're seeing. That is how you can distinguish because you can make it very difficult, but I'm, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for anybody to understand that we're either walking in the spirit of God or we're walking in the spirit of the Antichrist. And the Bible says, if we do not walk in the spirit, he walk in the spirit, you will not, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit the flesh lusts against the spirit it's against christ it's the anti-christ if we do not walk in the spirit of god this is literally saying that it lusts against the spirit this is called the anti-christ spirit 
the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, the flesh. Why is it antichrist? Because not having Christ in us, this flesh dies. It dies, and then there is no presence with God for eternity. And the spirit against the flesh, capital S, this is Christ's spirit. This is the spirit of God. And it's against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Christ and the Antichrist. They're contrary. There is a contrary going on. And this is how you identify. This is how you test the spirit. If they say that Jesus is Lord, Christ, the spirit of God. Anything else is the Antichrist spirit. Every position of authority in governments all around the world are being filled with antichrist bodies, with antichrist believers, with antichrist people, educated philosophers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the more this happens, the more the church was going to decrease. Will not allow the church to gather. Now I, I'm I'm gonna say this again one more time. I'm uh, uh, and I'm putting my my uh, my uh, my my uh, my 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 belief on the line, I guess, or my integrity on the line, and what I'm about to say. But I truly believe that as the false prophet uh, gets ready to bring in the one world religion because it's going to happen. I'm not going to, I'll never put a date because I'm not, I'm, I'm not, that, I'm not that ignorant, but as the false prophet brings in all the other religions to make a one world religion, the false prophets duty responsibility is to gather the religion, make it a one world religion. And and allow it to to worship the Antichrist. That is what the false prophet is going to do. Now, as we see more and more of this, we know that there are massive churches that have massed an amazing amount of money. And they're going to have to make a decision. And the decision will be this. We're going to take away the 5013C. Unless you join us. And because they have a massive amount of money, they're going to join them. And those that will not join them will be will have to be forced to pay taxes. And a lot of small churches will become even smaller. They will decrease. But Christ will increase. Glory to God. Amen. And, and that's what's going to happen as the false prophet comes into play. And the Bible says that the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Man. This is why the Bible is very clear about Christian liberty. In other words, there are things that are legal to do but they're not beneficial. There are some things that the church is going to be allowed to do, but they're not going to be beneficial to our soul. So we have to be awakened that it is time that persecution is going to come. It's, it's time that we must decrease. We will not be popular. We will not be liked. In order for us, for the church to be to be called sons of God or children of God, we will, because it's in us, because Christ is in us, we will love our enemies, just like Christ loved his enemies. We will bless those who curse us because Christ blessed those who cursed him. We will pray for those who persecute us, for, I mean, for those who use us. We will pray for them because that's the nature of God. 
That's the spirit of Christ in us. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So under the spirit, we don't, we don't get into a position where we do things outside in the flesh just to be seen by man. But there's a change of heart because God will judge the heart. Now, these are the works of the flesh. This is how you're going to identify antichrist. I mean, antichrist or in Christ, because you got to make it simple. Amen. God makes it very simple in the, in the word of God. This is the only book in the history of books ever being written. That prophecy that the prophecy spoken in this book have been fulfilled. And the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled are coming and we're starting to see the sorrows. Amen. And you go into the book of Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew 25. We know that it's the coming of the end of the age and the coming of the kingdom of heaven. But before that, there's going to be some sorrows. And I, I believe that the whole world is experiencing the sorrows. But America hasn't hasn't felt them yet. But these things are coming. And watch this. Verse 19, the book of Galatians. And these are the works of the flesh. Remember, there's an antichrist. And then there is for Christ or in Christ. And this is how we can see the things that are going on around us. That's why when you turn on the news, it's, it's going to be one-sided. It's antichrist. They mock Christ. You watch, you watch Netflix. You watch Hulu. You watch anything. It's all, uh, they, they damn our Lord. They, they, they mock our Lord. It's, it's just mocking after mocking after mocking. That is the antichrist spirit. It's been, is everything has been, everything's been uh, 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 filled with antichrist temples, filled with the antichrist spirit in places of position of power all around the world. The works of the flesh, remember the flesh, what it says? It says that uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit. A flesh not having the Holy Spirit is a body filled with the Antichrist spirit, okay? That's why the works of the flesh or the works of the Antichrist spirit are evident. <clears throat> They're evident. They're, you ought to be able to see this. We see it. And here they are, adultery. You see that on TV. It's not only, not only do you see it on TV, it, it is encouraged. It is encouraged on TV for men to cheat on their wives. It's encouraged. You see it on the billboards. You see it on commercials. I mean, it just becomes normal. You can be watching a movie. And, and then all of a sudden, some guys having sex with a girl for no reason. Like, like what does that have to do anything with the movie? Because it's the Antichrist spirit. Adultery. Here we go. Fornication. You see it all around us. That's the Antichrist spirit. That's where you will know that it's not of God. Fornication. Here we go. Uncleanliness. This is why we say... When it's clean, things that are clean are godly, right? This is why when you're at your home, you can live like me. I live in a little two-bedroom apartment, but we keep it clean. I know sometimes with children, it's very difficult, right? Nadie's always cleaning, <laughs> but, but we're always cleaning. Why? Because the Bible says that the word of God cleanses us purifies us it's washing us jesus washing the feet of the disciples uh the bible says how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news that's why that's why people that were always preaching the gospel from house to house they had beautiful feet because they were like man somebody's always washing this man's feet because it was a tradition when you went into someone else's house they would wash their feet. 
is, is that still, I'm pretty sure there's still a tradition in Pakistan, in, in Kenya, because you have to walk through dusty roads and, and there is someone there to wash their feet. Uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry. Idolatry is worshiping gods made of natural products. You know, our God is not, is not, his eyes are not of stone or, or wood or, you know, our God is supernatural. He is spiritual. That's why Jesus is the image of God. That's why he, be, he manifested himself in the flesh as the son of God, as the son of man. And we, and, and we beheld his glory. We saw the glory of God in Christ Jesus. That's why Moses couldn't see the glory of God unless he was hidden in the rock, in the cleft of the rock. What does that mean? He was hidden in Christ. Idolatry, we see that in man-made religions. They have a similarity. You know, I know, I know, I know, uh, uh, and there's other, a lot of countries, you know, that are, that are Catholics. I know a lot of Catholics that truly, truly, truly love the Lord. But, but they're, they're asleep unto the reality of the birth of the Roman Catholic. Where their agenda was, we're going to put God, but also government. And we're going to twist it. And it's a twist to deceive man. But I know a lot of Catholics, I promise you, there will be a lot of Catholics that go to heaven. Why? Because in their heart, they truly believe that Jesus is the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. So we don't, we don't judge people by the outside. We, but God judges the heart. At the end of the day, God judges the heart. What do we do? We show them the goodness of God. We preach the light of God. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love them. We're patient with them. We're gentle with them. Amen. Uh, but there is a lot of idolatry. There's idolatry in all other religions where they worship these things. Sorcery. Um, Kenya, Pastor Kowita can tell us a lot about sorcery. I promise you. Uh, where I'm from, the Rio Grande Valley, in the border of the United States and the border of Mexico, sorcery everywhere. I remember myself as a child, uh, maybe at the age of three or four years old, because I can remember. I still, rem I still remember those scenes. They were very traumatic to me. I remember this witch chasing me another time i was in brownsville another witch chased me uh i remember these things it was very traumatic amen there, because there's a lot of sorcery everywhere uh hatred here's the key one here's the key one we have to be able to agree to disagree you know i have friends who do not agree completely with my beliefs. But I don't hate them. And right now, the agenda, the agenda is that we, can, we can't just disagree. We have to hate. We have to desire wrong. We have to desire that something bad happens to you. <clears throat> And you're going to see that we're right. I mean, that's hatred. That's not of God. Hatred is not of God. Hatred is from the anti-Christ. Hatred boils, uh, creates hate. Hatred creates murder. You know, Jesus said, in order to be called a murderer or to be a murderer, you don't literally have to kill somebody. Just talking bad about them is murder. And that's happening within the church. That's what's real sad about it. Contentions. I mean, we were just preaching that the other day. You know, the, the wells of contention, the wells of dissension. You know, this is arguments within quarreling within one another. Uh, jealousy. That is not of God. That is the Antichrist. There is jealousy. Outbursts of wrath. 
You see that out there in the streets. You see out there in the demonstrations. You see that in, 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 in people. The, 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 the police is not evil, but there's people that are infiltrated that are wearing a uniform that have outbursts of wrath. Man, there's outbursts of wrath in everywhere. Why? Because it's an antichrist spirit. Somebody who's filled with the Holy Spirit, you will have self-control. Amen? Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of, which I tell you beforehand, just as I have told you in the past, that those who practice, the key word is practice. Will somebody have trip over themselves once in a while? You will because you're human and this is flesh and the flesh is weak, even though the spirit is willing. But the key word is practice. That means you're continually, committedly doing something that is anti-Christ. Such things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, <clears throat> for those who are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, we're just talking about characteristics of an anti-Christ. And now, with an anti-Christ spirit, now we're going to talk about a Christ spirit where the spirit of God is in us in verse 22 Galatians chapter 5 but the fruit of the spirit the fruit of what spirit the fruit of Jesus of the spirit of the Lord of the spirit of God of the Holy Spirit the heart of stone has been taken away that's unbelief has been filled with the heart of the flesh. That is, we believe in Christ Jesus. And now the spirit of God is dwelling with us just like he desired from, from the very beginning in Genesis to dwell with man, to dwell in the tabernacle, to dwell in the temple. And now he wants to dwell in us for this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the spirit is this, number one, love. And in order for us to literally uh, know what love is, you have to read 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, because it gives us the definition of what love is. Love is not a feeling, but love is an action. Love is a fruit of the spirit. Love is produced by God. God is love is produced by the spirit of Christ in us because love suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Amen. You've seen the gay parades. You've seen the, the anti this, the anti that parades. What are they doing? They're parading themselves. They're parading their agenda. That's not love. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own, its own agenda. Amen. It's not provoked. In other words, not easily angered. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity. In other words, we don't rejoice in sin. But we rejoice in the truth. In other words, our joy David said, return to me the joy of your salvation. We rejoice in Christ. We rejoice in the truth. It bears all things. Being able to follow, pick up our cross, that's bearing all things. Believes all things. Hopes in all things. Endures all things. Those who endure to the end will be saved. And love never fails. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God produces a fruit. We are the branches. Watch this. We are the branches. We're engrafted into Israel. We're engrafted into Christ. We are the branches. And we produce fruit out of the abundance of our heart. Our mouth speaks. And we produce not just words, but power. The Bible says that the gospel are not just words, 
but it is power. He, God gives us a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it produces a fruit called love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Why? Because Christ fulfills that law. When you do these things, you don't need to follow a law. Because the law is already in you, being fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh. Once we are in Christ, when Christ was crucified on the cross, he put to shame the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. When he was crucified, he put them to shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, here we go. And we'll close with this. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. In other words, let's walk the talk. America, it is time to wake up. On this birthday of America, it is time that we do something on a right foot forward today in America. And let's start to walk in this spirit. You want to see change in your community? You want to see change in your family? You want to see change in your ministry? You want to see change? We got to walk in the spirit. Don't be concerned if they walk in it. You walk in it. You take the responsibility of saying the spirit of the Lord is, is in me. And the proof that he is in me is that I, the love is going to create. God is going to create. The spirit of God is going to create a fruit. And this is the fruit. This is what's going to come out of me. And the evidence is that if this is not being produced, but the antichrist spirit fruit is being produced out of me, then I need to repent. America, we need to repent. If my people who are called by my name, Christians, right? This verse, 2 Corinthians 7, 14, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, was written to the Jews first, to the chosen people of God. But because we've been engrafted into Israel, it now pertains to us as well, as well. And if my people, because we are now his people, if my people who are called by my name, Christians, will humble themselves. America, today is a day to humble ourselves. Pray. Seek my face. Christ Jesus is the image of God. To seek God's face is to seek Christ Jesus. Humble ourselves. Pray. Seek his face. Turn from our wicked ways turn from our ways that is be, that is those ways are being produced because of the antichrist spirit if we turn from these things in other words we repent the bible says then then keyword then i will hear from heaven that means the prayers are shot up through the second heaven, through the third heaven. And he says, I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive them of their sins. We will be forgiven. And he will heal our land. America needs to be healed. The world needs to be healed. But at the end of the day, the individual has to be healed. You have to be healed of your hurt. You have to be healed of your offense. You got to be healed of whatever it is. Be healed. If somebody doesn't for, uh, forgive you, if somebody doesn't accept your forgiveness, that's not how you will receive your healing. You receive your healing from God. Knowing you can, you can confess unto God. He is faithful 
to forgive you on this day, on this 4th of July. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. You know, if, if we have been provoking anybody, because sometimes I know Facebook is real easy to provoke others. You know, I myself, you know, I want to come up publicly and say, Lord, forgive me. If I've been provoking the world, if I've been provoking the enemy, forgive me. You know, on this day, I think we can all come to the feet of Jesus. And I truly believe that we have victory. We already have victory. But we have to come to the realization that we must decrease. He will increase. In our weakness, his strength will be made perfect. You got to be willing to be persecuted like John the Baptist went to prison. Why? Because he preached the truth to, the, to Herod. Because Herod married his brother's sister. And they got agitated. But Herod couldn't kill John the Baptist because he was afraid of the people, because he was a godly man. But they started to drink. They started to party. And he made a promise to his stepdaughter. And he couldn't go back on that promise. And he, and he cut the head off of John the Baptist and he gave the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter to his wife. The enemy wants to have our heads on a silver platter. Are we willing to be, go to prison? Are we willing to be persecuted? And if you are, then we will decrease and Christ will increase. And guess what? Away from the body is to be present from the Lord, um, to be present with the Lord. Wow, what a good word. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Pastor Kowitha, God bless you. God bless your ministry. Uh, we're waiting on Facebook to deposit those funds. As soon as they deposit, you get your money so that you can get that computer. India, we want to bless you as well. Uh, we're doing some fundraising. We're going to uh, send some, some blessings to, to Pakistan. And we're having a mission service. So I will be getting with Pastor Kowitha. Pastor uh, Ratna, Ratnam, uh, Pastor Naveen, and so that you can uh, produce a video so that we can show it to our congregation on Mission Sunday. Yes. I, will, I will be sending you all an email or, or, or a message so that you can send um, our, our producer, our video producer, the video so that we can produce it on that day. So that on the day of missions, everything we collect in our offerings uh, will be sent to their destination. So um, God bless you guys. Anybody want to close with prayer here today? Go ahead. Somebody close with prayer. Go ahead. Uh, Pastor Naveen, close with prayer. Father, we have once again, we thank you for your encouraging word to us, Father Lord. We are so blessed by your servant, Father Lord. As John the Bakshi he has sacrificed by his life for you, Father Lord. He made a way for you, Father Lord. Such a way, help us to be like that. Help us to be a role model as a John the Baptist was, Father Lord. As we are sharing your word to the people of God, as you're sharing to the people, the Gentiles, Father Lord, help us to be bold, as help us to be sharing your word in a bold manner, Father Lord. We should not be afraid. We should not be Finish for Lord. Help us to be stand firm in the midst of the people, Father. Help us make us strong, Father Lord. Whatever persecution we may face, whatever problems we may face, Father Lord, help us to be strong in every area, Father Lord. And also we are praying our church, Father Lord. It is your body, it is our body, it is a, a temple of God, Father. It is a temple of you, Father. Help us to be make this temple as a clean of Father Lord. Help us to be walk in the spirit, Father Lord. As the people, as the people are walking in the flesh, for Lord, we should not be like that. We should not be walk in the flesh, for Lord. Help us to be walk in the spirit, for help us to have a attitude of love, for help us to be having a attitude of peace. Help us to be love everyone, of Father Lord. We submit all the people into one. Also, we are praying the pastor Beto and his ministries, Father. Bless him. 
make him a channel of blessing for many people and also we are pray, praying for pastor govinda and also we are praying for pastor ratnam and also we are praying for the sister oyanda for the bless each and every one for the bless this ministry help us to be faithful you until our last breath of our life make us holy make us clean of our life help us to be faithful in the name of jesus christ we pray amen amen thank you amen thank you. thank you so much guys we love you in the name of jesus god bless you amen thank you bye see you